my country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Now why y'all made me sing this song for? You don't even mean it. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video, but I just feel like I need to get something off my chest. Ever since Roe vs. Wade, what happened January 6th, there's been so many things that have been going on over and over that is making it very clear that what I have always thought deep down is the truth. This video is not going to be like completely organized. I just wanted to talk about how it's like to be an American born and raised in good old Minnesota and feel like I'm not American at all. Constantly being questioned and judged of whether my nationality is actually my nationality and just my personal experience growing up. Any white person I've met in my life will never assume that I was born and raised in this country and they always had this, I don't know what the word is exactly, but it was very annoying. Every time I spoke, oh, your English is very good. You're very articulate. Oh my gosh, I really like how well you speak. It's like, yeah, dummy, because I was born here. What'd you expect? And it was just so annoying because I've never had this assumption by any other POC in this country, but it's always white people. I'd be like, no, I was born here. Oh, well, where are you actually from? It's like, do you not know what the word ethnicity is? So why do I know more English than you? If you're going to sit here and judge people based on whether their nationality is their nationality, right? One of the most spoken languages in America is English. So how do you not know what ethnicity is if we're really going to sit here and talk and judge based off of language? You're going to sit here and say, I'm so articulate, I am well, so well spoken, but all you got is where are you really from? That's all you got? Mm. Another thing I don't like is that I have to constantly prove that my English is good. And it is so funny. I have a story from college. So I was in career counseling in college because I was actually trying to become a teacher slash, slash professor. And I've always wanted to become a professor or a teacher or something. But, you know, I've changed careers. I've talked about it on my channel. But basically, I went to career counseling to talk about my resume. And what's really interesting is that this person was East Asian. Let's just say his name is Ryan. So this guy, Ryan. Ryan, right? His name was Western, his first name, but his last name was clearly an Asian name. So then he looked at my resume up and down, and I was an English major at the time. And then this was the first thing he said. He said, oh, your resume looks good. Here are a few tweaks that I've made. But one big thing you should do is put at the very top of your resume that you are proficient in English. And I was like, but I put that I'm an English major on my resume. And he was like, yeah, I know, but you see, your name is not very Western. So because of that, you need to put that you're proficient in English so that employers can know that you know how to speak English well. And what's so fascinating is like, if it was a white person, right? I would just be looking at them crazy like, what? But because this guy was East Asian, he was a POC, right? I was like, wow, really? I have to put that I'm proficient in English when the second line in my resume says that my major that I'm graduating with is English. And I don't know, something about that just really boiled my blood, not anything else. I don't really care when white people go, oh, you're so articulate, where are you really from, blah, 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 saying all this BS, right? But what really bothered me is that a fellow POC is telling me that, oh yeah, people won't take your name seriously, they'll just take one look at your name and think you don't speak English. Another thing that just really broke my heart is that when I was on TikTok, I saw a lot of black women talking about how they recommend people to hide their race, their gender, on applications so that they could have a better chance of getting into jobs. So there was one girl that was black and she said that she tried to apply to Target. And when she applied to Target and put her race as black, they did not accept her, they denied her right away. But then when she reapplied, using this advice to change your race, she changed her race to biracial because, you know, biracial is easy to convince. Like, oh yeah, I look fully black, but I'm biracial. You can lie. So she put biracial and she ended up getting the job. She got, no, she didn't get the job, but she got an interview right away. She got an email saying, congratulations, you got the interview. Same name, same gender, same application, same everything. But the only difference is that she switched from race being black to biracial. And I know people will say this, they will be like, why do you want to work for a company that doesn't even want you as a black person? It's like, at the end of the day, being an American, yeah, most people don't like you because you're black, right? Most people don't like me because I'm Muslim. It's a reality, and I'm not going to stop myself from getting a job, going homeless, being jobless, 
simply because other people don't like me well they have to tolerate me because i need a job you know and it's like it's crazy how they're just like don't don't try to force yourself in spaces where you're not wanted it's like then how was segregation ended like if you're going to sit there and passively just take what people do to you you're never going to get what you want another thing i can't stand is how people always try to make you the token in every situation why can you only have one black person in a space? And it was so crazy because I feel like there's an intersectionality. A lot of issues when uh, being Muslim in high school and being black in high school. It was very interesting how everything intersected. So every time we talked about civil rights movement, people would turn to look at me as if I could talk about civil rights movement and what happened to my great grandparents. No, my great-grandparents were in Somalia. They were having a great, grand old time. They were not here in the United States. Every time people would talk about 9-11, there would always be like three, four, sometimes five white people that would look back at me in disgust like I did it. And it's so interesting because I feel like I'm constantly reminded that I'm not American, even though I am. Does that make sense? I don't know where this video is going. But basically, like my whole life, I've been told indirectly, passive-aggressively, in Minnesota nice terms, that I'm not an American. It's just this constant attitude where people are just cannot accept the fact that you can be like black, you can be Muslim, and you can be an American. Another thing I noticed is that there's a lot of backlash from other fellow Muslim black people. <laughs> so basically Somali Americans, right? And this is where I kind of disagree. One time we were standing for the national anthem and I stood, I stood there, I found the flag and I was like, oh say can you see? Like just like letting the person sing and I was just like standing there and I remember there was this group of um, Somali girls that looked back at me and they were like, what the fuck? They were so mad at me for standing for the <laughs> national anthem and I'm sitting there like, nah, I'm gonna stand for the national anthem, what you talking about? And then they were like, they don't care about you. They don't care about you. Why are you standing for the national anthem? And I'm sitting there like, well, damn, like, okay. And then I still stood because I'm not just going to sit down halfway. So I sat, stood there, but the whole time they were looking at me like I was an embarrassment. Like, oh, how dare you be proud of being an American? But here's the thing. My parents came here for a reason. You know, I always believe things happen for a reason. My parents came to this country for a new life, for a better life, for the American dream. They really wanted this American dream to work. So they escaped the war and they came from the refugee camps, they came to this country to give us a better life, right? But what's really interesting is like, growing up, I've always had this pride of being an American citizen. Oh, we are the melting pot. We are Americans. We are Somali Americans. I've always been proud of being from this country. But since my teenage years and my college years, and especially recently, there is more and more obvious signs that people do not want us here, they don't want to see us here, that they want to just kind of plug their ears and uh, close their eyes and pretend that we're not American. A lot of people, we are very well aware that the main reason why Roe Ro versus Wade is overturned is because they want to increase the white population. It's like, why even advertise or market America as a big melting pot when you don't even want people of color in this country. You see what I mean? Like, it's so fascinating. But anyways, like, I don't know how to talk about how un-American I feel without talking about multiple sections. Being a woman, being Muslim, being black, like, damn, like, can I catch a break in this country? Can I catch a break? It's like everywhere I go, people don't like you for certain things. People are just not honest. What they're basically saying is, because I am not white, I will never be American enough. If we're really gonna sit and be honest face to face, okay? I'm just saying like, because I am not white, I will never be American enough, period. And what's interesting is like, am I proud to be an American citizen? If you asked me this question maybe like seven years ago, I would be like, yeah, there are some issues in this country. There are some problems. But at this point, I'm like, I don't know, and I think that's why I'm making this video because I feel like I, you know, obviously I'm not the only POC in America that's feeling like, am I even American enough? The last thing I want to talk about is the crab in the bucket mentality. Let me explain what it means. So basically, there's a bunch of crabs in a bucket, and whenever a crab tries to climb out of this bucket, the other crabs can see and they grab the crab's leg and drag it back down. So that way the crab will never leave the bucket. But my question is, right? 
who put you in that bucket? Why are the crabs in the bucket in the first place? And I feel like there's a lot of POC, no offense if you're, I mean, a hit dog will holler. So if you're upset with what I'm talking about, it's probably you. I would meet POCs in a space. Let's say I am working at a new place or I'm in a classroom. There are some POCs that would look at me and be angry that they are not the token. They would be upset that I'm in their space. Like, oh, I'm supposed to be the only like black person in the space. I'm supposed to be the only Muslim person. You took that away from me. And what's really interesting is like there are some, some POC in this country that relish on the crabs in the bucket like they want to be the only crab that escapes the bucket and they feel like if all the crabs leave the bucket then there's not enough opportunities or not enough resources and my problem is with that mentality is that we are taught that there's not a lot of spaces for poc there's not enough spaces there's not enough resources there could only be so many so it's like a lot of times i see especially on social media even rappers there can only be one there can only be one main rapper there can only be one big beauty guru there can only be one black person in an entire space uh, one poc in an entire space that can take up that space and that's it and my problem is there could be thousands upon thousands of millions of white people in that exact same space but all of a sudden when there's more than two or three poc in that space it's a problem it's too much oh it's too many there is no such thing as only a limited amount of resources for us and whenever i meet poc that act this way they try to avoid you in a space or they try to not make eye contact with you it's very weird because i'm just sitting here like sis you're playing into this crabs in the bucket mentality you're playing right into their hands they want us divided you know what i mean so it's kind of like not on top of dealing with microaggressions oh you can speak well and all this bs on top of that you have to deal with pushback from other fellow poc that do not want you there there are some poc that will just see that they escape the bucket and maybe let's say they have a ladder they will take that ladder with them i don't know what the american dream means anymore my definition of the american dream is being financially stable getting my family out of poverty and just really trying to live a middle class or upper middle class happy lifestyle that is what my definition of um, the american dream is right i know this video is just so random i i'm gonna say this again but i just i've been thinking a lot about being an american it's just like this never-ending thing where it's like when too many poc find benefits in this country somehow it's snatched away from us and i don't really like that at all if someone asks me who are you i have to say i'm a somali american right i can't lie i can't be like oh i'm just somali because i identify so much with the american culture here and you know some people will like make fun of me for it they'll be like oh you need you need to go back to your country oh how dare you It'll be proud to be an american but i i don't know i identify so much with the american culture i'm just like so frustrated and i've been seeing so many tiktoks of people packing well i packing their bags and leaving america a lot of people saying go to ireland go to iceland go to nigeria like literally people poc specifically leaving this country in droves because of what's happening and yeah it just made me kind of think about being an american citizen here the thing is i've never considered leaving this country to go live somewhere else but i'm not sure anymore I've always liked living in Minnesota, if I'm going to be honest. I don't like the idea of running away. The people here who want us gone, why give in to that, you know? Because it's like, my whole life, I've been fighting to be in spaces, predominantly white spaces, my entire life, right? So it's like, my mindset is like, why do I let them win? Why do I have to seclude myself from opportunities from this country, from this land, because other people don't want me here? But yeah, that's all I have to say in this video. Let me know what your thoughts are and I'm going to catch you in my next one. Bye.